What's up guys? So I'm gonna round out this week of videos by talking about music, something music related. So this is my top five favorite electronic artists. And I determined with my little experiment last week where, or two weeks ago, where I didn't have my, where I didn't give any commentary on the artists. I kind of wish I hadn't done that because that did not affect my audience retention at all. So now I just destroyed the format and I've ruined my videos forever. I'm just joking, but I'm going to give commentary with these. So number five. Now, Dead Mouse, I wasn't, I didn't find out about him. Well, the thing is, I found out about most of the electronic music I do around the same time. But the first song I actually heard by him wasn't a tr like one of his standard progressive house tracks. It was actually Raise Your Weapon, which has a lot of uh, dubstep elements to it. Um, I know that he like makes fun of dubstep a lot because uh, he doesn't like uh, uh, I know he has issues with just the really heavy bass drops that that implement like you know a dirty cut which makes it sound you know really heavy like it does because with raise your web your weapon it's just a really low bass that's really clean but you know as I've as as I've gotten deeper into making music and everything I really learned to appreciate you know not all of his stuff because some of his music can be kind of repetitive but like uh, his stuff like Brazil and I remember you know I, I really love the melodic structures to his stuff and it's just a lot of really good music so Now, out of all the electronic artists that I've heard, he's probably, well, besides my, um, my number one, he's probably makes some of the most interesting music. He implements a lot of, you know, really deep bass cuts. He does a lot with really deep bass, which I love. I love really deep bass. It's like, it's like with his song, um, like a lot of his newer stuff that he's made over the last few years, it's like, oh, like going on, a, on an adventure through like bass cuts. And it's, it's very visual music, which I also really appreciate. You have to, I feel like, uh, he likes people to visualize his music. Plus he also implements a lot of, you know, natural sounds as percussion elements. Like I know there's one, like a lot, something I've heard a lot of his stuff. It sounds like he actually uses like a lighter uh, click as part of as part of the beat and that's really interesting to me and plus his stuff's just really moody it's funny whenever I play his stuff in like um, a bar or even when I'm DJing people do not they I always get complaints about it because it's just it doesn't live in the mood but I love that it just goes so deep and it's just it's very emotional music and I mean I guess not everyone can appreciate that but I certainly do Now, number, number three is Scream, as I'm sure you can tell, because that's how I format the video. I've gotten into him a lot more over the last couple years as I traveled deeper and deeper into like the roots of dubstep. And what was interesting to me is I found out like the the roots of dubstep were actually a lot different than what I expected. I expected it was always, you know, like it was in like 2011 and 2012, but like a lot of Scream stuff is just really mellow music with the uh, and it, where the uh, dub elements are obvious and I've really grown to appreciate that and uh, and I just I love the minimalist structure of a lot of his stuff um, I guess part of it is because it's kind of easy to make I mean I'm not saying his music is, is necessarily simple but a lot of it was is easy to make so it was easy for me to kind of like latch on to that early on but actually um, I've actually come to appreciate him more as a DJ and I like a lot of his you know uh, like house music I could I guess I would just say non dubstep based music. I'm not sure how he ranks as a DJ. Uh, I mean, I'm still learning how to DJ myself, but I just, I, I really love his attitude towards it. And he just overall seems to have, you know, a really good feel for music. So that's why he's my number three.
Now Skrillex, he, uh, he was my introduction into dubstep. I know people will say that he's not dubstep and I guess technically you could say he's not, he's bro step and he's, you know, he does his own thing. But I remember when I heard the bass drop to, uh, in uh, the, ben, the remix of Cinema by Benny Benassi. My brain just exploded. It was like the first time I heard the intro to Voodoo Child by Jimi Hendrix, and it just it it, it changed my world. <laughs> and I was going through a really stressful time uh, time period at the time, and the music was just really his music is really aggressive and like in your face and very visual as well as I said with Burial. So it just it was the perfect music at that time because I, I I heard I heard it uh, in early 2012. I know I was kind of late on the train for uh, dubstep, but. Uh, I couldn't really help that. That's just how it worked out. And I wasn't really that into electronic music at that time. And he was really my introduction into that. So I guess with him, a lot of my appreciation of him is just the introduction to electronic music and just the emotional uh, feel that I get from his music. And plus his music is oftentimes very complex and I also appreciate him as a DJ, so. Now, number one now i've uh, i kind of hate repeating myself because i've talked i've talked about apex twin in other videos like i say I, I, like i i heard about him years ago uh whenever i was watching a video on mtv about the creepiest music videos of all time and he was uh one of the top spots and in 2012 i got a little bit deeper into his ambient work but then when I started really making music and I was actually, it was actually when I did a research project for my, for my intro to writing class, uh, he was part of like the history of, he's a major art, uh, stepping stone in the history of electronic music. And that's when I really got into him. Like, and I was kind of obsessed with him for a little, t uh, a little while and I downloaded all of his stuff and he really showed me, you know, the possibilities of what can be done with electronic music. And it's amazing with some of his stuff that he was making back in like the nineties. I, I feel like a lot of music nowadays still has not caught up with it. So that's just really amazing to me. And it's, I, I, I've watched videos of, of him DJing back in like the nineties with, you know, the big gray monitor and, you know, a bunch of wires hooked up straight to like you know um circuit boards and that's just crazy to me so and if you want to hear uh, anything else i have to say on afix when i also talked about him in my video about my favorite musical artists so that so that's pretty much it for this video so as always if, if you like my video subscribe if you like me music buy it if you hate me tell everybody out c'est le lifetime de 120 BPM. Cette semaine, Afex Twin, du hardcore qui ne fait pas dans la dentelle.